Welcome back to a Powerhouse San Pedro podcast. My name is Bob Andrade, and this is a podcast focused on learning how to experience victory every day. Before we dive in, I want to thank you for taking the time to be here with me. If these podcasts are enriching your walk with God, please consider giving any amount to this ministry. Detailed information of how you can give will be provided at the end of this podcast. Also, please like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. Subscribing to this Powerhouse San Pedro podcast on YouTube assures you of not missing any of our new releases. Clicking the thumbs up button will help promote this podcast to others. And don't forget that you can share this podcast with anyone by simply clicking the share button. Once again, I am excited about today's topic entitled, Practice Makes Permanent. So without any further ado, let's dive in together. What we are going to learn to practice today is our spiritual authority. In the Garden of Eden, through man's choice of sinning, he forfeited his God-given authority. But through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, man's authority was restored to those that embraced what was provided for them through the sacrifice of Jesus. So what do we know about this authority? Well, Mark chapter 13 and in verse 34 says this, It is like a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. In the same way, the believers and followers of God have now been given authority by the Master. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says, And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. Now here's what's interesting. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to ask God to cast out demons. When we have been given authority to cast out demons, but instead pray that God cast the demons out, we are basically asking God to do something that he gave us the tools to do ourselves. Here's how authority works. Authority doesn't beg. Authority doesn't ask. Authority commands. Our divine spiritual authority is set up in a way to make commands upon the kingdom of darkness, not on God. God gives us his authority to exercise our dominion over the kingdom of darkness. The commands are upon evil and darkness not on heaven. We are not told in Scripture to ask God to cast out demons. We are told to do it ourselves because we have already been given the authority to do this. Today, I am going to show you what this authority looks like and how to access and utilize your spiritual authority. Let's now look further into what this authority looks like. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8 through 13, we see a Roman officer saying this to Jesus, Lord, who am I to have you come into my house? I understand your authority, for I too am a man who walks under authority and have authority over soldiers who serve under me. I can tell one to go, and he'll go, and another to come, and he'll come. I order my servants, and they'll do whatever I ask. So I know that all you need to do is to stand here and command healing over my son, and he will be instantly healed. Then in verse 13, Jesus turned to the Roman officer and said, Go home. All that you have believed for will be done for you. And his son was healed at that very moment. Authority is exercised through our spoken word. The power of life and death are in the spoken word as stated in Proverbs chapter 18 and in verse 21, where it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. One of the things that made it clear that Jesus was the Son of God was how he exercised authority that no one else had access to in history. With his authority, he cast out demons. Mark chapter 1 and in verse 27 and 28 says this, The crowd was awestruck, and unable to stop saying among themselves, What is this new teaching that comes with such authority? With merely a word, he commands demons to come out, and they obey him. So the reports about Jesus spread like wildfire throughout every community in the region of Galilee. 
Jesus even healed the sick with his spoken word. In Luke chapter 7, the centurion said to Jesus, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I do not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. And then there was the interaction with the healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. Now this was classic. Here's what happened. The son of Israel's God, Jesus, came into this pagan place, which was the magical pools of Asclepian, also known as the pools of Bethesda. Here, Jesus heals a Judean man without any magical formulas or spells. Jesus did this by telling the man to get up and walk. In other words, Jesus healed the man in the same way Israel's God once created the world, simply by the power of his spoken word. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. Jesus was given authority over everything. In Matthew chapter 28 and in verse 18, it says that Jesus then came close to them and said, All the authority of the universe has been given to me. Now go in my authority. Jesus tells us in Matthew 10 and in verse 8 to go out in his authority to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. As you read the Gospels, notice that you never see Jesus asking the Father to please heal someone. Instead, we see that Jesus healed people with his spoken word, as in rise, take up your bed, and walk. I have never seen where Jesus prayed, Father, please heal this person. Instead, we see that Jesus healed people by simply giving a spoken word, as in John chapter 5 and in verse 8. Jesus told the man to rise, take up your bed, and walk. The early church healed people in the same way. Peter said in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And then in Luke chapter 9 and in verse 1, Jesus not only gave his disciples authority over all demons, but also to cure diseases. Here's what it says. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Notice that they weren't praying and asking God to heal people. They had the authority to heal and they were exercising it with a spoken word, just as Jesus did. I absolutely believe that prayer can also heal people as we are called to pray for the sick in James chapter 5. The point that I am trying to make in this podcast is that we are also taught to heal the sick using the authority that Jesus gave us. In other words, it's not an either-or thing, but rather a both-and thing. And then we see in Mark chapter 16 and in verse 17, it tells us that healing can come through the laying on of hands. And these signs will follow those who believe. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The laying on of hands can transfer power from us into the person and heal them, just as in the healing of the woman that touched the hem of Jesus' garment, where felt power flowed out of Jesus. In John chapter 7 and in verse 38, Jesus said that those who believe will have the Holy Spirit flowing out of their innermost being. And in Acts chapter 5 and verse 15, it says that even Peter's shadow healed people. Now, let me take a moment to be very clear as to how we are to access this kind of power. This spiritual authority is accessed through faith. There is a story in Mark chapter 9, verse 17 through 29, where it tells us about how faith allows us to access our authority. This is where the disciples came across an unusually strong demon that wouldn't budge. Jesus made it clear that they lacked faith by calling them faithless. Jesus also made it clear that some demons are so strong that a higher than usual level of faith is required to cast them out and that we can gain that higher level of faith through prayer and fasting. 
In Matthew chapter 17 and in verse 20, he told them, It was because of your lack of faith. I promise you, if you have faith inside of you no bigger than the size of a small mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move away from here, and go over there, and you will see it move. There is nothing you couldn't do. In other words, nothing will be impossible for you through faith. As I mentioned at the top of this podcast, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to ask God to cast out demons. The church, which is you and me, have been given authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. If we pray to ask God to do it for us, we are basically ignoring the word and asking God to do something that he already gave us the authority to do ourselves. This reminds me of the story of the boss who hired a new employee. On the first day, he told his employee that the first thing that he wanted him to do each and every morning was to come in early and empty the trash cans from each office. So on the first morning, the new employee came in early, and then he promptly called the boss on the phone to ask him what he wanted him to do when he came in each morning. And the boss said, I told you yesterday that I want you to empty the trash cans each and every morning. And then the next day, as he came in early, he picked up the phone and called the boss again, asking him, If it was okay if he emptied the trash cans, the boss was bewildered as to why this employee kept calling him every morning. The next morning came, and you guessed it, he called the boss, asking him if he would like him to empty the trash cans, or would the boss like to do that when he comes in? Each and every day, he would call the boss, asking for permission to empty the trash cans. Are you getting the picture? We have already been given the authority to act. Our divine spiritual authority is set up in a way to make commands upon the kingdom of darkness, not on God. God gives us his authority to exercise our dominion over the kingdom of darkness. I have experienced conversations with many believers that are hesitant to utilize this authority with fear that they are making commands on God. These commands are upon the darkness with the authority of heaven. This is why I pointed out to you that we are not told in Scripture to ask God to cast out demons. We are told to do it ourselves because we have already been given the blessing, the authority to do these kinds of things. Practice makes permanent. Now we must exercise our authority through faith. May your faith of what is unseen be the key to access the authority that you already have in Him. And may great things be accomplished through the power and strength of the Holy Spirit as you step out in faith with authority over a defeated kingdom of darkness everywhere you go and in every situation you face, starting with the issue you are currently involved with. Practice makes permanent. If you were blessed by this message, please type the word Amen in the comment section below. And if this podcast rings true for you, please consider joining us each week right here on our YouTube channel entitled Powerhouse San Pedro. Until next time, my name is Bob Andrade, and this is a Powerhouse San Pedro podcast made just for you.